Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Status Report highlight for the 6th of July 2016. And this week the Status Report might seem a little thin for those who follow development closely, as not much new has occurred between Friday when the presentation at RTX was held and today. Focus is on recapping stuff shown at RTX 2016 covering point six one and what we can expect for it. But aside from that we have some updates on current stable brand shotfix some new renders of work in progress animations for the first of our predator animals, wolves, and Peter talks to us about body temperature and how it impacts Daisy gameplay. Current stable branch hotfix goals are known server crashes, item duplication methods, animation state issues, tent lifetime refresh, and spatial orientation for vehicles. And a couple of key things to note on the above list. Tent lifetime refresh is currently not functioning as intended on Stable Branch, meaning you're only able to refresh the lifetime of placed tents by packing and unpacking them. Intended functionality on these is to match the current behavior of containers such as barrels and backpacks, which refresh their lifetime whenever an item is moved inside the inventory of the container. In regards to spatial orientation of vehicles, the hotfix we're working on here should resolve complaints of vehicles not persisting, as current stable branch behavior does not properly save the directional orientation of the vehicle on server restart, in some cases this can cause the vehicle to be destroyed and cleaned up. In addition, Hicks has uploaded some animated GIFs of animations for the upcoming wolves on the Trello board, but of course you know me and they're in the video here, but there will be a link in the description below for you to see them in all their glory. And for Peter this week, with the release of DayZ 6.0 stable version, there was a bit of misunderstanding regarding the body temperature mechanic and considering it currently as bugged, since the character can reach hypothermia state in a very short time, which wasn't the case in 059 version. Peter would like to point out, to those who aren't aware of it, that the engine which DayZ runs upon is capable of marvelous things that aren't obvious at first sight. Trajectories of sun and moon, even its phases, star positions, tide heights, complex weather forecasts with air temperature, wind, newly added fog and other game world subsystems directly depends on the time of day, date and geographic coordinates configuration. While geographic coordinates is tied to the map itself and cannot easily be changed, date and time is exposed in server configuration so admins can change it freely. Unfortunately date and time is not separated in the configuration file and the easiest way is to set it to the system date and time of server itself especially to get more variety in time of day across the server. And as most servers aren't running in the past or in the future, that's where things like the body temperature mechanic which is connected to those settings can seem off, even if it behaves correctly. Peter beds most of you will be overheating and sweating while sprinting hundreds of meters in full gear, long clothes and with gloves, masks, vests and helmets. On top of it all in summer weather with air temperatures around 30 degrees C. As DayZ is visually set in eternal autumn, it makes sense that this mechanic is balanced to that time of year, where nights are actually cold and days can be anywhere from a bit warmer to quite chilly depending on the forecast. Not to mention plenty of foggy and rainy days, of course it could be hard balanced without taking weather and air temperature into consideration. However, it would be a step backwards considering the DayZ will be open to modding and there being possibilities for us to expect maps in different times of the year and geographical coordinates. Jungles deserts, mountains anyone? To allow more control over it, we are going to tear apart date and time in the server config so the date is not affected when the system time is used by admins. In the meantime, there was an offset applied in the calculation of body temperature for experimental version so it behaves more accordingly to the visual of the autumn environment instead of an actual summer date set in the server config file. Now is a good time to unveil a bit more regarding the temperature feature. Even if it's obviously quite low on the priority list now, many of you notice there is a heating up and cooling down of item temperatures already present in game. This can be used to affect the body temperature of your survivor as heat packs, and even improvised ones like cans heated up in fireplace embers will raise the body temperatures while cold items will lower it. We are going to add more purpose to handling temperatures by making food perishable, especially raw meat alongside blood bags with plenty of refrigerators in houses or at junkyards, you will be able to store food and blood bags safely to keep their expiration under control after you connect the fridges to an electrical system. The addition of cooling box containers will help you to carry food and blood bags around in fresh condition and ready to use. Considering food as one of the most crucial things for survival and with lowering the amount of non-perishable food in the world towards the end, it will lead to promoting interesting approaches to gameplay for both lone wolves and groups alike, as it will offer short time solutions of immediate consumption 
balanced against long-term solutions with incorporating electricity usage at barricaded houses, camps, and bases during the times of need. And with that being said, a lot of people have asked me, what about the barricading houses that Dean mentioned a while ago? Once upon a time, Dean did mention that he loved the barricading system in Project Zomboid and that he'd love to see it in DayZ at some point. So it looks like it still may be a future plan. And before we wrap the video up, I just want to do a quick RTX 2016 highlight, mainly focusing on the Eden Audio Technology merge and weapon sounds update. Remember, for the 061 milestone goals, there is also server locking queue and dynamic spawning of infected, and Hicks has been kind enough to put together a higher quality version of the presentation shown at RTX 2016. The link for that will be in the description below. But here we have a little snippet from the new weapon sounds. Take a look at uh, the MP5K, that's our example uh, weapon for this presentation, being fired at 500 meters. And here on this slide, we have the MP5K being fired at 200 meters. And finally, we have the MP5K being fired at 30 meters away. You can see the, uh, the survivor just in the right corner of the screen there uh, firing the weapon. And that's all for this week's status report highlight for the 6th of July. 2016. As always, all links are in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you peeps next time.